the problems with folk psychology. Given all this criticism, let's now look at the problems with folk psychology. I think that Churchland's big mistake is in treating the whole of folk psychology as a conventional scientific theory that originated with the Greeks. As above, the true picture, I believe, is more complex. The evolutionary part is more like a built in theory, which we will inevitably use to deal with our environment, especially our social environment. Unlike other theories, we can't change this any more than we can change our digestive systems. The ethno psychology part, what Ryle called the official doctrine, is culture and epoch bound, therefore, can and does change within historic time. On the other hand, I find it unlikely that ethno psychology will evolve into the reductive concepts of neuroscience, mainly because it will always have to be integrated with evolutionary psychology. This officially accepted ethno psychology is ultimately grounded. In the cultural worldview of particular societies. In the modern West, it has generally taken the form of Cartesianism, and this has blocked and hampered empirical research into mind and consciousness. To this extent, Churchland is right. But is this the same? As saying that folk psychology as a whole is a straitjacket on the efforts of modern science to understand consciousness. From the opposite perspective, could or should contemporary scientists use folk psychology as a reliable guide for exploring mind and consciousness? As above, I believe that most of the problems involved in choosing between these alternatives arise from the fusion of ethno psychology, especially Cartesianism, with our evolutionary mental equipment into what has become known as folk psychology. Clearly, the evolutionary part of folk psychology. Is part of the subject matter of neuroscience and consciousness studies. Ethno psychology, on the other hand, probably is nothing but a collection of outmoded theories and should, from a scientific point of view, be dispensed with. The trouble with this is that it may prove problematic to establish exactly. Where the boundaries between these two components of folk psychology are located. 